वी आर टर्निंग मोर एंड मोर ऑफ आर एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड इन टू अर्बन लैंड इवेंचुअली अगर आपको दो तीन चार करोड़ रुपए का घर होगा वट एवर बट देन आप उस घर को खा तो नहीं सकते हो ना एनी मोर डिवेलपमेंट राइट नाउ ग्रांटेड हाउसिंग इशूज हैं सब कुछ है वट एवर वी आर एसेंशली गोइंग टू टर्न पाकिस्तान इन टू अल होल आई डोंट नो इफ हम लोग जेनेटिकली इफ वी कैन स्टार्ट कंज्यूमिंग कॉन्क्रीट राइट बट आई थिंक वेर 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 वी आर मेकिंग अ मैसिव मिस्टेक एंड दिस मिस्टेक इज गोइंग टू हॉन्ट फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ आर लाइफ आई थिंक इट्स वन ऑफ सबसे बड़ी जो हमने गलत फहमी है कि वी आर एन एग्रीकल्चर इकोनॉमी वी आर एन एग्रीकल्चर प्रजेंट इकोनॉमी ठीक है हमारे पास हम अपना बीज नहीं तैयार कर सकते हम 20 मिलियन हेक्टर के लिए सरकार मतलब आपकी जो एग्रीकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट है दे ओनली हैव हज़ार एकड़ से 2000 एकड़ का बीज व्हिच इज एब्सोल्युटली नथिंग Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the Pakistan Pivot. I'm Michelle Muhyuddin and today I'm in conversation with Zara Khan. Zara Khan is a soilist agriculture specialist. He is also the advisor to startups and investment funds. After the operation Zarbeaz, he has helped rebuild the agriculture ecosystem of Waziristan and more importantly, he has spent the past 10 years localizing hydroponics and making them affordable for Pakistani growers through his work with Ether. I welcome you to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um I really want to focus today on food security crisis that we will be facing in the coming year and we are all already seeing uh, the initial stages of that and there have been multiple warnings issued by the World Food Program that the the world will be going through a global food crisis since mm-hmm. the beginning of 2022 and they have warned us uh, that we will be seeing the uh, these effects of food shortages in the year 2023 so my first question to you uh, would be regarding the recent floods that engulfed the country what kind of impact have these floods had on our agricultural landscape that is a very interesting question and that is kind of bringing a lot of sins of our past to the hmm. present so for the longest time we've not had the proper development in place we've not planned far ahead into the future so with these recent floods nearly what 17 to 18% of your agricultural cropland your total cropland is around 20 million hectares arable around 2 to 3 million hectares was underwater or is damaged besides the third of pakistan being underwater so the issues that have actually come up now is that with this flooding we've had a lot of toxic waste which hmm. was in um manchar lake which was in our rivers for a long time because you know we've had projects like uh, the right bed outflow drain or the or the uh, nara valley drain which have been flooding these fresh water supplies with sewages with sewage for nearly a century at this point the yeah. first project was started in 1921 so the biggest effect that is going to happen is that initially we are going to have very shortfalls of of yields we will face food security issues but we have essentially changed the physical chemistry of the soil itself to long term kender it is going to damage how it is going to further exacerbate our uh, crop production and further further in, make us a more food insecure nation so uh, the bad these times. floods have also had an impact on our livestock yes. how have they impacted our livestock and will we facing any shortages regarding this in the future as i mentioned manchar lake and and the sewage that has been in the water right yeah. so we have something called e coli and coli right which is basically fecal matter which is which is present in massive amounts in in this in the flood water that has gone around so that flood water is going to go and irrigate fodder crops is going to go and irrigate places where animals feed yeah and all that all that bacteria all the viruses that have come with the flood water is now actually essentially being transferred to the animals by the consumption of contaminated crops yeah and so you're saying that, their their feed is going to be affected by yeah, this yeah essentially i won't say it i won't say it like the covid-19 pandemic yeah but it is going to have pretty bad pandemic or it is going to be pretty bad overall because mm. a lot of essential proteins will be compromised mm. for people and you know we may face a lot of issues regarding stomach stomach and diarrhea and whatever happens whenever floods occur when do you see 
that the flood water is receding and when will our cropland when is it going to be cultivatable again i think the problem now is not the fact that the flood waters recede we've essentially hmm. washed away millions of years worth of topsoil with the flood because of mismanagement because of how we've how we've laid out our production systems so regardless whether you know the flood waters recede in the next 2 months 3 months 4 months whenever even if they recede tomorrow we've essentially removed you know whatever bare topsoil that was was left in the soil hmm. and even after these flood lands become cultivatable again abhi bhi cultivate ho sakti to some extent but we're just going to have massive amounts of like it's just going to become more expensive to grow crops yeah. where it would cost maybe two bags of urea or maybe three bags of dap you know we might be facing double that you know maybe four bags of urea right now which might cost a farmer close to 18 to 20000 rupees with the current state of the market yeah so i think the question now is not like how soon can we get these lands cultivatable again but how soon can we recover these lands and make them as productive and as mm. efficient as possible so there are multiple factors that are going to be putting our food security at risk in the future we are already seeing a crisis of affordability right now mm-hmm. and in the next year this crisis might turn into an availability crisis mm-hmm. what are your comments right so we need to understand what we've done to our own ecosystem essentially right for decades with the, with our carbon emissions with everything we've kind of localized our carbon we've localized our, our methane and carbon emissions which are kind of affecting the way we produce okay so imagine 170 million tons of carbon is going into the air right now hmm. so whether it's an affordability issue or availability issue right now it's just going to get again it's going to kind of become more and more difficult to grow into the future what's happened now is that people now see that there are lands which are susceptible to flooding like survivorship bias agar aapne if you're familiar with that hmm. people will notice that these lands which are flooded right we cannot grow over here we need to move inland we need to move to places where the floods aren't going to uh, occur yeah and when that happens your land prices are going to go up people are going to start charging extravagantly for whether it comes to agrochemicals whether it comes to fertilizers whether it comes to tractor prices again aapke jo with covid-19 uh, rundown of oil production to run a tractor hmm. a few years ago only cost maybe 1100 1200 rupees an hour hmm. that same tractor now runs for upwards of 1800 to 1900 rupees an hour so your cost of imports is going to rise dramatically hmm. you are going to have a massive run where people might end up hoarding lots and lots of available land space hmm. and you know and most likely whoever has access to the right inputs is going to take is going to make a killing out of it they're going to take their pound of flesh um do we have a fertilizer crisis in the country mm-hmm. and we also have an energy crisis so are, how are they both interrelated so essentially what happened is that when covid-19 hit you had a sudden run down of demand when it came down to you know oil because people weren't moving people couldn't go out there was there was basically a, a micro recession in a way hmm. when it came down to the, the demand of oil and oil does not produce only diesel and petrol it produces agrochemicals it produces petrochemicals like fertilizer yeah so overall what's happening is that in with pakistan with the current opec situation hmm. where you know you have oil diplomacy in play you know they can put the pressure on anyone and whoever doesn't play by the rules you know they can just say with global with the way things mm. are running that you know because of the demand. cut in oil production yeah. we are we are seeing the oil prices rising even higher yeah. mm-hmm. and and that's actually putting a further strain on food prices mm-hmm. so it, it's really increased inflation and it's really made it hard for an everyday consumer to afford basic necessities mm-hmm. shouldn't the government put any kind of price caps on on the basic commodities so that the common man can benefit from it pehli baat ye hai ki that granted 17% of your crops were affected but then this is kind of opened up this scenario where there's a lot of panic in the market hmm. and on the end consumer front 
you know whether it's a long march whether whatever it is people are facing uncertainty right and there are people who are in the market who know that where to get the right crop for the right price from whether you know they go to afghanistan whether they go to india whether they go to iran it's not a, it's not an issue for them they've been doing it for decades it's mm. it's a part of their business so essentially if the government does come in and they're like you know what this is a price gap it doesn't really matter who's going to monitor or who's going to guard how how many kilograms of onions or potatoes or whatever you're going to buy right how easy is it to hire someone for 400 500 rupees and tell them to go out and buy 10 kilograms of tomatoes and do that a, a hundred times and yeah you know short the market again so essentially if the government does step in right now they're going to cause a massive panic and they're going to cause a mass they're going to basically lay the field for anyone with enough deep pockets to enter the market and pick up as much produce as they can afford and mm. essentially you know have a black market for mm. vegetables mm. i also want to touch upon our uh, import of wheat which we were mainly getting from ukraine uh, before the war uh, or the conflict between russia and ukraine started and uh, since it started it's had has put an abrupt halt mm. to uh, our imports of wheat from there and um, ukraine was act- was actually and does produce about 4- 400 million um tons of wheat per year that many countries are importing so has that had a major dent in our, in our uh, imports of wheat and has uh, that created any kind of crisis that we are seeing or we will be seeing in the future essentially they came humne ek scenario se develop kiya kiya hua for decades and ye hamare buzurgo se hi ye hum log ke unki habits ko hum replicate kar rahe hain theek hai water scarcity अब जब वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस ठीक है वी डू नॉट रियलाइज कि वाटर स्कैरसिटी फ्रेश वाटर की होगी वी विल नॉट हैव एक्सेस टू फ्रेश वाटर अगर अभी रिसेंट आई वॉज डूइंग अ प्रोजेक्ट इन नेवल एंकर जिन इस्लामाबाद एंड हमने 500 सौ फुट पर बोर किया पाँच सौ फुट के बोर पर पानी मीठा नहीं निकला है असेंशली हमारे जो अपने प्रोडक्शन प्रैक्टिस ऐसे हैं कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल पंजाब में आप जाते हैं जब आपके ट्यूबवेल में नमकीन खारा पानी निकल आता है तो जो लोकल जो मेरे वर्क मेरे कॉलीग्स थे दे वुड से कि दैट हम ट्यूबवेल को बहाते रहते हैं सो असेंशली वट दे वर सेंग इज दैट हम अगर सो अगर सौ घंटे हज़ार घंटे दस हज़ार घंटे या एक लाख घंटे हम ट्यूबवेल को बहाएंगे जब तक सारा जो नमकीन पानी जो है वो सारा जो है ना आप हम निकाल नहीं देते हैं एंड यू नो वी कैंड एंड वी डोंट केयर वेर इट गोज एंड यही पानी आपका यू नो विच इज़ डैमेजिंग इट्स इस पानी के ना और भी बहुत ज़्यादा केमिकल्स है और भी बहुत ज़्यादा कंटामिनेट्स है एंड hmm. यही पानी जा रहा है एंड यही आपकी ज़मीन में जा रहा है एंड yeah. आपकी जो मिट्टी है उसका काम क्या है असेंशियल इट्स अ फिल्टर जिस तरह आपके घरों में आर ओ फिल्टर्स लगे होते हैं डिफरेंट लेयर्स के थ्रू जाते जाते वो वो खारा पानी साफ हो जाता है एंड टर्न इन टू फ्रेश वाटर इन अवे राइट एक तो ये इशू है जो हमने खुद हमारी हरकतें से वी आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर वट वी डन this is not because of external factors we are essentially responsible for this crisis itself hmm. population ki baat ye aati hai um 2015 16 ki main baat karunga i was a wazir asan at the time yeah and we had this very small we thought you know what hum log kya karte let's get the population data and let's get arable crop land hmm. now अब मुझे पता है कि एक बन एक इंसान को एक एकड़ ज़मीन आठ कनाल जगह चाहिए होती है सारी खुराक पैदा करने के लिए राइट सो देर इज ट्वेंटी मिलियन हेक्टर्स ऑफ लैंड जिसमें सॉरी फोर्टी मिलियन हेक्टर्स ऑफ लैंड जिसमें से अकॉर्डिंग टू द यूएन चालीस से पचास फीसद किसी काम की नहीं है इरोजन की वजह से ख़त्म हो गई है विंड इरोजन सॉयल इरोजन वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट असेंशली अभी उसके बाद बिकॉज आर हमारे जो किसान हैं जो आर फार्मर्स इज नॉट मेकिंग decent money so would you want to be in a situation scenario jidhar aap kehte hain theek hai agli fasal ye you like yaar besh se to 8 10 lakh 15 lakh rupaye ki zameen mein bik jayegi and i'll go i'll go to karachi i'll go to lahore i'll go to islamabad and jo zameen jo jo naya malik hai wo jaane aur uska kaam jaane yeah so we figured out with the way our population was grow, is growing ke that by 2027 
ठीक है फाइव ईयर्स फ्राम नाउ सेंचुरी कि दैट वी वुड हैव एक्चुअली स्टार्टड फेसिंग अ सनैरियो वेयर द गवर्नमेंट वुड हैव हैड टू स्टेप इन एंड प्रोवाइड रैशनिंग जिस तरह एंड इस किस्म की रैशनिंग कि जी आपकी सब्सिडाइज खाना बट इस तरह जिस तरह वजीरस्तान और जरब अजम के बाद जैसे हुआ कि आई डी पी एस के साथ वर्ल्ड फूड प्रोग्राम वाले आए एंड दे स्टार्ट प्रोवाइडिंग राशन टू फैमिलीज वेर यू और हैड ग्लूकोज बिस्किट एंड थिंग्स आई दैट एक इस तरह सीनारी वट एव स्टार्ट हैपनिंग इन अर्बन पाकिस्तान एंड असेंशली दैट टाइम लाइन एक्सलरेट हो गया है वट वॉज सपोज टू हैपन आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स वट वॉज वट आई हैड होप फॉर वट हैव हैपन्ड आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स अभी से स्टार्ट हो गया एंड दिस इज अ डोमिनो अफेक्ट एंड इट्स इट इज़ गोइंग टू गेट गो फ्राम बैड टू वर्स इन द नेक्स्ट कमिंग ईयर्स बिकॉज अगेन आई नो थोड़ा सा दिस इज गोइंग टू बी लॉन्ग विंडेड बट ये जो गर्मी हमने फेस की है वट हैज़ हैपन्ड वाई हैव दीज रेंज अकर्ड गर्मी इतनी ज़्यादा हुई है देर इज बिन मैस अमाउंट ऑफ वेपोरेशन ऑल दैट मॉइस्चर हैज गॉन इन टू द एयर and they've started forming rain clouds over there and essentially when those low pressure systems came in al nino jise kehte hain you had the scenario where there was so much fuel ye the, the clouds were saying that you know why should we stop yeah and we whether it's for 100 days or 1000 days you know they it kept on raining and this is only going to get worse yeah um next year you know because the same scenario is going to be replicated again next year yeah you experts that i spoke to they also predict that we might be facing such floods in the coming years as well mm-hmm. and also with the food shortages and the food shortages more floods are going to create that's a very serious crisis considering we are a population of 220 plus million people mm-hmm. um do you think there's any way to build resilience and adaptation uh so that we are better prepare, prepared in case something like this happens again mm-hmm. and also for the future food crisis that we might be facing cop 27 ke andar humne global community came together and said that we need to limit our climate our temperature rise to 1.5 mm-hmm. degrees centigrade right 1.5 degrees centigrade per we have we're facing 100% 100 times more floods mm-hmm. right if we go to 2 degrees centigrade then we are looking at 147 150 times more floods all over the world so is scenario ke andar hum we sit down and say ji khuda de wale ya allah taala ke wale hmm. we cannot do that essentially we have to mitigate our systems when we have to adapt hmm. um traditionally hum yahi kehte hain hum kehte hain ki ji india mein itni paidavar hui hai hamari itni paidavar hai whether it's whether we are at 40 and yes at 50 hmm. you know we have we've had this sibling rivalry for so long but you know places like holland yeah where we produce maybe 18 to 19 tons per hectare they're producing upwards of 400 tons per hectare right america is the largest exporter of fruits and vegetables mm. and produce in the world yeah the second largest is holland america is a massive land mass yeah so essentially what we are trying what we have to do if we need to develop resilient structures in itself is that we stop copying what is coming in through our developmental programs ki ji better seed kare better planting kare mulching kare ye kare but bring in produ- better production systems yeah. you know bring in what holland is doing and uh, there is activity along those lines it's on a very small scale right now but we have started working on it so that you know hum bhi we essentially now Hmm. instead of transporting our crops from hundreds of kilometers away we now need to make maintain our urban scapes jo hamare sheher hai jo hamare jo sheher hai hamare mohalle jo hai we have to turn these into hamare production systems essentially what we need to do more than anything else is that we we need to start localizing these systems and we need to localize these systems to our hamare sheher hamare mohalle hamare paas itni zyada area hai which is wasted jidhar yeah. kuch bhi nahi hai acres ke hisab se zameen hai islamabad mein available hai which jidhar kuch bhi nahi hai so why not turn these into systems jidhar soil less farming hum kar sakte hai which essentially what people in holland are doing yeah and they're producing energy they're producing solar energy from from the same plots of land jidhar sabzi aur fruit uga rahe hain so you know we have to kind of transition towards that instead of focusing on our antiquated practices so what you're saying is that we need to shift towards newer ways of uh, 
practicing agriculture, mm -hmm. since we are predominantly an agricultural economy, mm -hmm. we really need to look towards first world countries and adapt some of the things uh, that, that they are doing and that they are that are bearing a really good yield. So essentially, I think it's one of the biggest things that we are we are an agricultural economy. We are an agricultural peasant economy. ठीक है हमारे पास हम अपना बीज नहीं तैयार कर सकते हम 20 मिलियन हेक्टर के लिए सरकारें मतलब आपकी जो एग्रीकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट है दे ओनली हैव हजार एकड़ से 2000 एकड़ का बीज व्हिच इज एब्सोल्युटली नथिंग ठीक है वी हैव एसेंशियली बीन इंपोर्टिंग ऑल आवर कमोडिटीज ऑल आवर इक्विपमेंट फॉर डेकेड्स सो हमने अगर यू नो अगर हमें फूड सिक्योरिटी हमें फूड रेजिलियंस चाहिए वी हैव टू वी we do not need to replicate the practices we need to replicate the thought processes we have to make our seed our own jo nahi hai is waqt 87% of the world seed is owned by one company and wohi seed pakistan mein export kiya ja raha hai without proper acclimatization are we not doing any kind of research on seed and crops on our own well we have elephant garlic g1 jiske liye ek hive bani hui which i love cooking and which essentially has no use whatsoever itna itna glow itna bulb hota hai it's not even a bulb it's it looks like something and people are trading it for 500 600 700 rupees in the market right now yeah so our entire agricultural research system cannot be propped up by a uh, 800 rupees ka lesson ka bulb hmm. there has to be more we need to you know we have to look at our wheat crops we need to develop more hybrid we need to develop more productive wheat crops हमारे पास असेंशियली आज कल वेदर इट्स इंडस्ट्रियल इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन वेदर इट इज कमर्शियल प्रोडक्शन वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट नथिंग इज मेड नथिंग हैज अ पाकिस्तानी आई पी एंड नथिंग इज ग्रोन इन पाकिस्तान और डिवेलप्ड इन पाकिस्तान इट्स इधर बेस्ड इट्स इधर ग्रोन डिवेलप्ड इन हॉलैंड इन द मिडल ईस्ट द फार ईस्ट इन द यू एस एंड फ्रेंकली हमें तो वी डोंट इवन गेट लाइक बी ग्रेड quality yeah. we get like f grade quality because because those companies know that our farmers can't afford those seed so why should they waste time and resources and marketing efforts and jo jo kehte hain whatever is left over hame mil jata hai so you know we kind of need to change we need to break the entire system and we need to kind of look at it from fresh eyes and with fresh perspectives yeah that if we have to ensure food security in our nation for the next 100 years or so we need to localize our own technology what i gather is that the world is moving towards more sustainable agriculture you yourself are involved in hydroponics and soilless agricultural practices mm -hmm. so do tell me more about that and tell me what do you mean by soilless agriculture hydroponics which is popularly known right um it's it's a category of uh, soilless agriculture एंड सॉलिस एग्रीकल्चर के हम असेंशली दो चीज़ें करते हैं हम मिट्टी को ख़त्म कर देते हैं एंड मिट्टी के अगेंस्ट इधर हम हवा में उगाते हैं और या पानी के अंदर डायरेक्ट उगाते हैं या वी यूज़ एन ऑल्टरनेटिव फोम आप लाइक फोम यूज़ किया जाता है रॉकफुल यूज़ किया जाता है विच इज़ यूज एन इंसुलेशन आई पर्सन यूज़ कोकोनट का स्किन एंड इसमें यह होता है कि आपको एक स्टेराइल मीडिया मिलता है जिसके अंदर माइक्रोव्स नहीं है कुछ भी नहीं है मिट्टी के अंदर अरबों के हिसाब से आपके माइक्रोब्स होते हैं इन एवरी स्क्वायर इंच एंड ये सारे आपके एंड गुड फॉर द सॉइल दे गुड फॉर द सॉइल बट देर कम्पीटिंग देर कम्पीटिंग विद द विद द प्लांट फॉर प्रोडक्ट फॉर प्रोडक्टिविटी सो दिस प्लांट हैज टू कम्पीट विद अ बिलियन माइक्रोब्स टू अचीव यील्ड एंड दोज माइक्रोब्स विल आर फाइटिंग फॉर द फर्टिलाइजर फाइटिंग फॉर द न्यूट्रियट्स आर फाइटिंग फॉर एवरीथिंग दैट द क्रॉप इज दैट द प्लांट इज फाइटिंग फॉर एसेंशियली वट वी डू इन हाइड्रोपोनिक्स इज दैट हम वो माइक्रोब्स को ख़त्म कर देते हैं हम एक प्लांट को उतनी पोटेंशियल देते हैं कि वो जेनेटिक अपनी जेनेटिक पोटेंशियल अचीव कर सके एंड इसका एग्जाम्पल ये होता है कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल टमाटर जो है आपकी नॉर्मल पैदावार चार से पाँच किलो है पर प्लांट पर सीजन ओवर फोर टू फाइव मंथ्स वी फर्स्ट नहीं अचीव थर्टी फाइव किलोग्राम्स पर प्लांट इन फोर मंथ्स राइट कम टाइम फ्राम सीड टू हारवेस्ट कम खर्चा बिकॉज जो ये जितने मीडियाज होते हैं ये ज़्यादा बेहतर तरीके से पानी रिटेन करते हैं सो आपकी बेसिकली इरीगेशन कॉस्ट भी कम हो जाती है द अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर यू नीड टू यूज इज रिड्यूस्ड लाइक टू पुट दैट इन टू परस्पेक्टिव 
I'm for an acre, I might use 100,000 liters of water. Uh, that acre, कोई और यूज करता है हर दस दिन बाद पानी देगा वो हर दस दिन बाद पंद्रह लाख लीटर पानी देगा फॉर फाइव मंथ्स सो आई यूज हंड्रेड थाउजेंड ओवर फाइव मंथ्स देर यूजिंग अपवर्ड्स ऑफ नियरली नाइनटीन नाइन मिलियन टू टेन मिलियन लीटर्स ऑफ वाटर टू इरीगेट यू नो सेम क्रॉप वाइल फेसिंग अ वेरी स्मॉल हार्वेस्ट So in Pakistan to what extent are we using hydroponic solutions This is fun you have I'm happy that you've uh, asked me this on the ground on the on the grassroots level there is a small movement right now jidhar log hydroponics pe adoption kar rahe it's basically more or less focused around uh, Faisalabad hmm. but sadly Pakistan ke andar 2004 5 ke andar ek uh, hydroponic greenhouse established kiya gaya tha on 5 hectares this is around 10 10 to 12 acres state of the art cool. you know it was poly fiberglass space whatever you want to call it at that time it was the rumor was that it cost about 2 to 3 million dollars to set up so halat thode se kharab ho gaye so the original founders of that uh, hmm. organization ended up selling that greenhouse to p meruddin arad university and p meruddin arad university ne phir unka mandate hai ki that we need to localize uh, this production technology so they started offering paid hydroponic training jidhar agar aap sign up karte 7 oh. din 10 din ke liye it was a residential program so you would go on the farm which is which is somewhere in rawat which is somewhere in rawat yeah theek hai and uh, you know you'd learn the ins and out of the system akhri jo advertise hua tha is in 2017 2017 to 18 and that was the last time this program was advertised and whenever we whenever i've tried to reach out to them or whenever any of my colleagues uh, from the investment space have tried to reach out to them the answer we've received is that dekhe aapko nahi pata ki aapko paise kithe invest karne chahiye aap hame hire kare as consultants and we'll tell you where to spend the money and i have been doing this for 10 years some of my colleagues have been doing it for longer hmm. you, we know that you know this is how this is how you dodge a question yeah this is how you dodge a commitment and essentially that farm is out there somewhere <laughs> but um uska jo mandate tha jis purpose ke liye wo banaya gaya tha jis purpose ke liye acquire kiya gaya tha wo us purpose thi serve kiya ja raha hai is waqt okay so still there is very few people you're saying that that are actually involved with hydroponic i believe maybe 25 to 30 acres in the whole of pakistan from oh. um peshawar all the way to karachi Okay so like I do really want you to also tell me a little bit about what is cover cropping and is it beneficial okay to our agriculture yeah so theek hai so when you imagine jab aap mitti ko aap ek zarai ilake ko aap imagine karte hain aap kya imagine karte hain ki ji lush green khet hai milo ke liye right yeah reality kya hai jab jab aapke paas jab fasal ho jati hai wo zameen ko nangi chhodi jati hai udhar kuch bhi nahi hota hai एंड उसकी वजह से वो इरोजन हो रही होती है एंड वेन यू गो टू द यू एस वेन यू गो टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया वेर एवर यू गो बिटवीन क्रॉप्स ज़मीन को नंगी नहीं छोड़ा जाता है बिकॉज वेन इट्स बैरन लाइक दैट विंड इरोजन कम्स इन एंड इट टेक्स अवे द टॉप सॉइल राइट कवर क्रॉपिंग में ये किया जाता है कि आप ऐसे क्रॉप लगाते हो अगर दाल चने भी हो जाते हैं मतलब मल्टीपल क्रॉप्स यू नो देर लिगुइम्स लगाए जाते हैं देर्स मल्टीपल वराइटीज आउट देयर डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर यूज सो अगर आप जानवरों के लिए करें या कंजम्पन के लिए आप कर रहे हैं ना एंड ज़मीन के अंदर मॉइस्चर मेंटेन रहता है एंड आपकी ज़मीन की क्वालिटी कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं होती है एंड विन इरोजन से बच जाती है अगर आप किसी देहात देहाती इलाके में जाए फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू गो टू मुरीद के विच इज़ राइट नेक्स्ट टू लाहौर या आप डस्का जाएँ या आप के पी में बनू जाएँ या कोहाट जाएँ फसल फसल टू फसल ज़मीनें नंगी होती हैं एंड अगेन दिस इज एग्जैबरेटिंग इट्स काइंड ऑफ इंक्रीसिंग द वे आर सॉल डिक्रीसिंग आर सॉल फर्टिलिटी जितनी ज़्यादा टाइम तक एक्सपोज रहती है उतनी ज़्यादा आपकी ज़मीन कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ हो जाती है एंड असेंशली जब अगले गंदम आ गए मकई आ गई चावल आ गई जिधर हो सकता है आपकी दो बोरी यूरिया या डी पी लगे उधर भी तीन लगेगी 
I also, I mean, we talked about the food security crisis in Pakistan, but yeah. I do also want you to touch a little bit upon the food crisis that is being exacerbated in Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, uh, due to the floods in Pakistan. Okay. And how, how is our neighboring Afghanistan affected by floods in Pakistan? Afghanistan and Pakistan have had very deep trade relations going back decades. So normally in border mandis like in Banu, and on the, in the tribal region, what would happen is that you would have traders from, Punj from Punjab, from Sindh, from Balochistan come in with their entire stocks. And you'd have traders coming in from Afghanistan and who would buy the stock. And then they would transport, whether it's uh, vegetables, whether it's wheat, whether it's arm staples, they yeah. transport it to Afghanistan and then sell it over there. And we what would essentially, and what would happen over there as well is that like anara, which fruits and vegetables, not vegetables as such, but the fruits that they would bring it over here. So that is why, you know, sometimes you would have off-season anar when Balochistan wasn't producing. So we are a very symbiotic, we are in a very symbiotic relationship. And with our floods, we have essentially put all of Afghanistan, all of Afghanistan is essentially is facing the same amount of food insecurity as we are. Because we are, we were their supplier of, of food, of nutrition. So you can't live off of fruit itself, right? Yeah. You need, you need staple, you need proteins, you need carbohydrates. And all of that is gone now. And again, with the forex crisis, with everything, with, with, with our petrol, with the fuel crisis right now, which is essentially happening globally, the cost as as expensive as it is for a Pakistani, if it's 400 or 500 rupees, if it's kilo, if it's a kilo, if it's 600, 800 rupees, in the Afghani, a middle class Afghani, Afghanistan, is buying vegetables. And we all know what the state is over there. The economics are not solid. So a lot of people have become very food insecure right now. Uh, the predictions are that the a lot of other countries which uh, which are exporting food and that's a very concentrated market so even if one of those countries is affected mm -hmm. uh, the world faces food shortages mm -hmm. um, we also import uh, tomatoes and onions from neighboring uh, Iran and Afghanistan mm -hmm. we've also seen a price hike in that and um, like there's multiple factors for, first of all after the pandemic that has had an impact on our economy the mm -hmm. inflation is through the roof mm -hmm. in pakistan we are seeing double digit inflation and um there's an e energy crisis we have ha uh, we have climate uh, shocks and we are probably going to be continuing to seeing those shocks mm -hmm. so do you see a food crisis uh, in not just Pakistan in uh, around the rest of the globe in, in in many different countries do you what kind of crisis are you seeing I need a globe for this or I need like a map if you were to take the equator and stretch out you know a Pakistan size like line on both ends and run it across the globe all these areas like in a lot of investment so investment associations investment institutions believe that their investment thesis is again are based very long term some institutions are developing theses that go over a hundred years and many of them believe that pakistan and these parts of the world will not be able to sustain human life after 2050 or 60. so essentially if you look at the map pakistan jitna ek, draw a border right across yeah. it you're going all of all of these countries are going to be are going to face a massive amount of heat waves, a lot of water scarcity, and these places will become uninhabitable if we do not, you know, control damage. We cannot revert it, we cannot reverse it at all, but we need to do damage control right now. So essentially, you know, a lot of the worlds, a lot of the developing worlds is, you know, we're, we're going to face a lot more damages than repatriations can pay for, mm. and we are going to lose a lot of lives. As the years go on and as our population continues to grow, we are turning more and more of our agricultural land into urban land. Mm -hmm. uh, does that have any effect on, on our food security and overall? Pakistan Green Revolution was uh, in the 1970s, 1960s, 70s. Ke hua. And this is the only time in the world where an agronomist got a Nobel Prize. Mila. Uh, Norman P. Balrog, he ended up because Sustainable wheat practice, good wheat, which were not compromised, right? 
he ended up saving a billion lives. Only time in history where an agronomist has received the Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Prize. So, and he has this beautiful quote. He says that the world can only sustain 4.4 billion people. So at that time, he passed away in the, in the, late, in the early 2000s. He said, so which of the 6 billion will volunteer to die? Abhi hamare paas jo abhi halat ban rahe hai, essentially jitni humne housing societies develop kar rahe hai, wherever yeah. we've turned prime agricultural land, right? Whether it's in Islamabad, whether it's Barrier Town, whether, whether, you know, it's, whether it's DHO, whatever you want to call it. Wo sari zameene, hamai zarai zameene thi. Look at Orchard, Orchard Scheme 3. And look at uh, Chak Shazad. This was all designed to be Islamabad's food basket. But it's a logo na mahal mana liya. So essentially, time abhi ye aan hai. And ye to ek bhot micro mein baat kar raha hoon. Iske jo mulk ke andar jo har saal hamari jo rural jo dihati zameen se, jo zarai zameen se, residential ya housing zameen jo develop conversion ho rhi hai. If you start from Tarnol, and go all the way to uh, DHA phase 8, which is the exterior, which is as far as I believe, yeah. this is all being converted into houses, into housing societies, into land, which is, which is meant to feed the people. Eventually, if you have 2, 3, 4 crore, ghar, ghar whatever, but then you can't eat that house. Ho na. And what we're essentially doing right now, jitte bhi hum log zarai zameeno se, and it's non, aapko interestingly CDA bhi permission de raha hota iske. Aapke paas new city ko dekhe, aap look at top city, right next to the new airport, yeh sari zarai zameen hai. And yeh sari jaga jo hai, jo isne Islamabad ki khuraak paida karna tha, jise surrounding areas se khuraak paida karna tha, the ghar ban raha So the point is, eventually we're going to reach a point, that I don't know if I'm not genetically if we can start consuming concrete right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we're 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 making a massive mistake, and this mistake is going to haunt us for the rest of our lives. Because right now, sadly or not, I'm look, we have been drafted in in this fight against Mother Nature, and Mother Nature is a is a heavyweight boxer right now, and we. And we don't know what we're up against. And just unresponsible tariqe se hum construction kar rahe hain. Aur hum log development kar rahe hain. It's kind of saying ke you do development for the sake of development. You don't. You've got countries like the Netherlands that are saying right now ke that if we do any more development, in, you know, agri fear aati ke that, you know, we might end up closing the economy or, you know, putting the economy into, the, into uh, recession we are essentially destroying our country. Mm. So, you know, we are kind of in that scenario right now. Any more development right now? Granted housing issues, hai, sab kuch hai, whatever. We are essentially going to turn Pakistan into a hellhole. Chidar jo hai, khuraak jo hai na, aapka, mm. agar is saal 200-300 rupiah ka tomato liye, next year aap 600-700 ka lena. And tiyar ho jaye. Because this is what is going to happen. And essentially a time is going to come in the next, in my, in my belief, five years where the price of meat and vegetables will be on par with each other. I think they already are. Well, they Close are. enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe mango will eventually, yeah. you know. Um, Zarak, stunting and malnutrition is a very serious problem yeah. already in our country. Mm -hmm. So in the future, do you think this is going to become more of a problem? Mm -hmm. are, are we going to move more towards producing calories, rather more nutrition? Right, so again, um, sorry, when we when we farm right now, we farm a variety of a variety of nutrition sources. You know, whether it's dal, whether it's gandam, whether it's makai, whatever. You know, we're covering our our diet to some extent, and which works. Eventually, when you have a human being needs an average male or female, right? They require two thousand two hundred fifty calories per day. To convert that into one year, you need around 900,000 calories. Essentially, our population is growing Eventually, people will have to make a choice. Ji, do we need energy to do our job? Or do we pay a premium for nutrition? 
एंड असेंशली दिस इज आपकी साइंस फिक्शन के अंदर जो डिस्टोपियन जो पोस्ट अपोकोलिप्टिक फिल्में और नावल्स के अंदर बात की जाती है दैट ह्यूमन बींग्स आर फेड अ पेस्ट ऑफ कैलरीज और न्यूट्रिशन एंड वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इज दैट असेंशली you know the most uh, the most calorie rich source is uh, sweet potatoes shakarkandi and eventually a lot of people will have to eat a lot of shakarkandi <laughs> to maintain their calorie uh, calorie requirement for the day so imagine a future where instead of having normal jo aapke pakistan has very rich cuisine culture you end up reduced to eating sweet potatoes every day you gave a lot of warnings and painted a very kind of apocalyptic scenario for our future and uh, that sounds really scary uh, i really do want to move more towards solutions mm-hmm. and what more we can do so uh, you being an agriculture specialist um what solutions do you think that we should move towards you already mentioned a few but mm-hmm. if there is one thing just one thing that you could change in our agriculture practices that you think would mm-hmm. make and have the most positive impact yeah. on our agriculture what would that be essentially i know that i'm very scary right now jo bhi maine bola hai kafi khofnak hai you know essentially what i'm saying is that every person in this room everyone under the age of 30 is going to face this crisis right बट बात यह है कि दैट इट इज़ अ रियालिटी एंड अगर हम लोग आंखें बंद कर लें और मुंह फेर लें द प्रॉब्लम इज गुड गो अवे राइट सो ग्रांटेड आई एम इट्स नॉट द मोस्ट इट्स नॉट समथिंग एनी वन वुड वॉन्ट टू हियर बट इट इज रियालिटी ऑफ इट इट नीड्स टू बी सेड इट नीड्स टू आई थिंक वी क्लोज इन ऑफ या असेंशली असेंशली द वन थिंग आई वुड डू एंड we're not and lowest hanging fruit being i think this is like the best hanging fruit out there it it is going to take time to transition to hydroponics humne industry banani hai jo existing industry we do have a lot of the industry available by the way um it needs to transition to that production model mein time lagega to mitigate our losses to mitigate our scenario as much as possible planting trees and that is very long term work what we need to do is cover crop we need to essentially save our soil jo abhi hamare paas jo bacha kuch reh gaya hai because to uh, this i believe this is like an inch right an inch of top soil takes a minimum 500 years right so whatever we have left hmm. we need to humne iski zimmedari leni hai humne cover cropping karni hai we need to jo practices hamare hain ki jo hum pani khada kar dete hain because granted rice crops essential export to pakistan hamare we've lost a few billion tons but rice produces so much methane with our current practices and granted pakistan has gone on to say repatriations but 175 million tons of carbon emissions just may say methane is a massive amount you know we're just as re- responsible because we refuse that's to. that's us when we are that's only producing 0.5 0.5 percent. Yes, that is us. 0.5 percent ki itna hai to phir some and by the way, this number increased. Uh, I was looking up the number, right? So from 1999 to 2000, the number went from 0.0.2 to 0.3 percent in one year, and then it's been steadily climbing up and up and up. Um, normally, if you look at cars, the financing be, became very common around that time as well. So you can actually think that the more cars that are on the road hmm. you know the more our carbon emissions increased so essentially if we cover crop hum log apne soil ko bacha rahe hain and we're leaving something so that kal our our children will not say ki inhone hamari kya gun chhod di hai and we give them a fighting chance and you know somehow we recover this and honestly outside of agriculture the only thing i believe in is that is that you know to reduce the number of cars on the road public transport ke access chahiye mein better where instead of ke you know agar aapne e sector se f sector se g sector se aapne for example blue area jana hai so it's not that you get a bike or a kareem to go to the nearest metro station we sh- we should have more accessible means of public transport and reduce the number of cars on the road you know all right 
So, yeah. Uh, I, I do agree with your uh, suggestion for, uh, you know, cover mm. cropping. Mm. And, and yeah, we, we definitely do need to reduce our uh, carbon emissions. So thank you so much, Zarek for being on today's podcast. I, I really learned a lot about our agricultural practices. Uh, there was a lot of gaps in, in my knowledge when it comes to our agriculture and food security. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much thank uh, once again. <laughs> on that note, we will end this podcast. Like our content, share and subscribe to our channel and do let us know what your feedback is. I'll see you next week.